<clears throat> good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. What's up, John? How's it going, man? Thanks, I appreciate it, man. <clears throat> Today's video is going to be uh, something a little bit different. Um... Oh, thanks for the like. Yeah, if you guys like the videos and the content, definitely um, do me a favor and hit that like button. Uh, it kind of helps to rank my video a little bit better so more people can see it and um, maybe pick up on some things for sure. Um, but for today's video, guys, um, yeah, so I am getting ready to finalize my um, installation on this side of things. Um, as far as the, uh, as you guys can see, I have the cover off for the uh, midnight solar I have the wind turbine disconnected and off right now um, I'm actually getting ready to put my conduit in to make it all look very clean um, but um, I have a question for a lot of you um, because I have some options here um, <laughs> I I'm creating a lot of power right and so that's like a blessing in disguise right um, more than enough power to keep the batteries full all night no problems at all um solar works good wind turbine works good everything is working good right um but um i have so much extra power <laughs> it's one of those things right um especially at night or you know in the evenings when the wind turbine is just powering away and um old time engineer brought up a uh good um point he, he not a point well yeah a point he left a comment on one of the videos and he said um what am i going to do with all the extra power um, once my charge controller goes into float and if I'm still producing power from the wind turbine um, You know my wind turbine will um, free spin which he which he's right um, and You know, it's one of those things right if if it's charging and it goes into free spin Then that's not so great, right? We don't want it to free spin So here's my options to divert the um, extra power um, I've got a couple options at least here and I want to see what you guys think about it uh, the first option is would be ideal but would not work because of how things work with the float. So what I'm saying is basically once the system gets full, right, the batteries are full, the midnight solar charge controller decides to go into float finally because everything is charged up, everything is topped off. What will happen is it will actually stop charging the batteries and then basically the wind turbine will go into free spin. It will create no amps coming into the system because the charge controller will stop that from happening, right? And so I have this opportunity to use this all this extra power. And so I'm really trying to think of a really good way to use it. And I don't know if you guys seen in some of my earlier videos, I had a um, cryptocurrency mining rig. And I was thinking about putting the, um, the dump load onto the cryptocurrency mining rig. The only problem with that is, is that um, if the voltage drops below a certain amount, the charge controller will now engage again, right? To start charging the batteries back up to bring it back up to float. And so what's going to happen is my mining rig will get turned off every time. So it'll be a back and forth action, right? So that won't be with the float. Um, it would be nice if I could just let it run, but that's not how it's going to work with the float, right? So now I have to think of another way of where I'm going to put this power if I'm going to consume it. I could purchase a midnight solar clipper where basically it'll just stop the power. And I don't, I don't use the power anywhere. It'll just stop the power, right? So once it goes into float, it'll basically just um, short out my cables like a, like a, you know, a three-way switch. Um, short them out. That way the wind turbine just stops. Um... And that's fine if I don't want to throw the power anywhere, right? But um, since I do have the opportunity to throw the power somewhere, I need to think about where I'm going to throw it. Yeah, so um, that, that brings up the other um, point here. So if you guys can see, today is a very gloomy day here. Um, we got winds and stuff, and we got solar coming in still yet. Batteries are <laughs> fully charged, no problems. Um, 
so this is what I'm thinking. So I do have the um, four commercial size solar hot water heating panels, right? Um, and that's going to be the main workhorse for the hot water, right? But on days like this, you know, I can't gain heat because, well, it's gloomy, right? It's cloudy and foggy and foggy and all of that all together. Um, so um, what I am thinking about doing is throwing the extra power into the, the hot water heater. Um, I do have... Um, regular elements and i do have the dc heater elements um so that's what i'm actually thinking about doing um now that i'm living with the situation here and experimenting and seeing what's happening um it's like a good problem to have right to have all this extra power and so now it's just a matter of where do i want to put it right now i could use it to heat the hot water as well on like the bad days like this um there is a split air conditioner going on to, onto the home that does ac and heating so i could maybe set it up in a way i'd have to look into it but i have to set it up in a way where i could power that device and either keep my home cool or warm by burning up the extra power um so i do have a couple options the the first easiest option would just be um send all the extra power to the heating elements in the um, hot water heater right um to continuously um, keep my water hot no, pro no no matter what um so that but the only problem is is that here here becomes the issue is that like on like this see the days we have here guys um this is not every day this is you know once in a while here and so majority of the time it's very sunny and hot and so what's going to happen is those solar hot water heating panels will be doing most of the work and keeping my water hot and so basically if i have all this extra power coming from the wind turbine pumping that power into the element then i'm you know heating up my water even more and I have safety relief valves that's going in place to allow me not to go over a certain temperature and she'll blow off that extra heat or pressure um, to allow cold water to come into the tank, right, to um, cool down the tank. So that's going to kind of work against each other now, right? It's like one of those problems, right? You have too much power and too much um, sun power too as far as um, heating your water. And so I'm concerned about the good days where we have really good sun. Um, I have to find another place to put the power. Like on a day like this, not a problem. Go ahead and dump it into the hot water heater, right? But on a day where it's sunny and I and I don't need that extra heat in that tank because it's already hot, um, I need to figure out where I'm going to put that power, <laughs> right? <coughs> so <clears throat> um, that's, that's what it's all about, guys, is um, experimenting with your system, finding out what's going to work for your setup and your area and that kind of stuff, right? So... Yeah, I got some options here. I'm trying to think what I can do with the power, um, especially on those. I'm not worried about like a day like this, right? Throw the power in the hot water heater, no big deal. But on the sunny days, what am I going to do with that power? Where am I going to send it? You know what? That's a great idea. I almost forgot about that. Thanks, Roy. Thanks for bringing that up. Uh, they have a split air. They can run on the turn or so on. Um, on, okay, let me back up to answer, um, um, let's see, what's up, Fred, John, yeah, but the UPC will not be able to keep up with the amount of power that the, uh, mining rig consumes, that's the problem, Let's see. I'm using my dump load to heat my dog's shed. Well, we don't have a heating problem here, guys. We're in Hawaii, right? And so, um, yeah. <laughs> um, we have tropical weather, so I can understand you're doing that. That's great if you can use that power to heat your dog shed. Um, but in my case, there's no reason to heat a dog shed. <laughs> um, over here, at least. Uh, let's see. So Roy has a good one. What's up, Yankee? What's up, John? So Roy, yeah, I almost forgot about that. That is getting set up once everything else is done. Huh. Well, th yeah, okay, so that's maybe that's may maybe my best option is throwing my um, extra power into the jacuzzi, right, the spa. Um, I could do that. Yeah. Yeah, I could easily do that. Absolutely.
Well, thanks for bringing that up. I almost, guys, I'm so tied up with the bigger projects. I forgot I even have a spa sitting over there. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. So I think that's what I'm going to do here is, um, maybe if, I mean, I like that option. I really do. I just sold some Bitcoin to buy food. <laughs> right on. Uh, the chat window? Um, on my phone, it's showing it's only half a screen. I don't know what's going on with that. I'll have to check it. Well, yeah. Um, so that might be a um, feasible option. Throw all the extra power into the jacuzzi or the spa that would work that would work but i had to find a way to divert the power between the two right um because then on a day like this i would love to have the extra power going into my regular hot water heater right to heat that water um and then once it gets up to a temperature then hopefully there's a i gotta think about this a way to divert that power over now to the spa to heat that water I'm sure there's a way. I just got to think about it. Yeah. Hmm. I like that idea. I really do. Uh, another thing, guys, real quick on my... um. No, it's not about the video cards. The The mining rig is not the issue. The, the issue is, is that when it goes into float, right, she will trigger on and off all the time. And so as you know, when you turn your computer on, it takes time to boot. So I have mine set up so it automatically boots even if the power cuts off. But the problem is is that if the float is going in and out, to like, you know, just in and out, in and out, in and out, the computer will just just start wigging out because it won't be able to stay on long enough to do anything, you know? Um, so that's the issue. So it's not about the cards. It's more, more or less about um, the on and off issue, right? Because once she drops below a certain point, um, the charge controller will go ahead and say, okay, I can turn back on. Then once she hits float again, then she'll say, okay, let's, you know, turn off technically. And now we, you know, it's going to be back and forth. So I don't know if that's going to be feasible. Yeah, but you, but you still have the grid, right? So um, that's the, that's the issue, right? I mean, you're, you still have the grid to fall onto. So you can, um, you can afford to have something on a timer, to work for you like that so um so as i got a phone call um but anyway um so today i'm getting ready to f finalize a lot of this stuff on this side now here's something i ran into that i'm gonna have to work around a little bit so i got some conduit here and i've been playing around with something here if my camera will focus focus come on focus there we go Oh, your dump load AC. Oh, I see. I see. I'm trying to utilize the DC current, you know, DC to DC as much as possible. Um, less components, less issues, and direct power, right? No conversions, really. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do on my end. That might be something to look into, though, on the AC side um, later. Yeah, I could I could think about that as well. That's a, that's a good point. Thanks for bringing that up. I'll think about that. Um, but anyway, on the conduit here real quick guys, so I ran into a, not an issue, but it's just going to look ugly is so I'm trying to bring all my wires into my box over here, right? So I got, I got two of these and they actually work perfect size to fit into this box. So I could easily go right into there, right? And bring it over and then the next loop actually ties right into one of the knockouts. So that would work perfect. The problem is, is that I'm going to have two loops right here in front of the battery and to me, that's going to look real tacky, and I don't like that look. So I'm going to scrap that idea. And I'm going to go ahead and um, tie in from here and loop around the back of the, the controllers here. And then come into the side of the panel, because I do have a knockout, a couple knockouts on the back side. That way I can have my wire just kind of run up behind my conduit. Um, and um, basically kind of make things look a little bit more neat and clean instead of having like a big loop come up like that you know um so yes yeah, i hooked it up last night and i'm like Ugh. it's one of those things i'm picky right and i'm like i don't like how that looks it would work perfectly fine yes but i didn't like how it looked so uh, i think i want to do it the other way hide more of the um conduit and stuff like that 
Um, I do have conduit that's going to be coming through the floor here, tying onto the wall um, for the solar and for the wind um, wires. Right now, it's all temporary on that side. So I have some options. Sorry, guys, I'm just reading the comments here. So wait, I want to I want to read that real quick. Sorry, guys, I'm backing up a little bit here. You can develop a high energy laser weapon <laughs> to shoot incoming drones. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Yankee. So when I hit fl hit flow, my AC will run. It won't. It will not. No, if not, then it stops. Then it turns off. Sorry, guys. This chat window is really bothering me. It's real skinny. I don't know, I'm going to fix that or figure out how to fix that stuff. Um, so wait, let me back up to your question. Not question, but your statement here. Um, so when I hit float, my AC will run. Okay. So you have a dedicated line, a, um, you know, dedicated power line connected to what? I mean, to your AC, I mean, but... How are you doing that? Because if you, you know, if you run, if you're, if you're saying what you're saying you're doing is running, once you hit float, you turn on your AC line or a, you know, the dive, you know, the AC side. That's still like for me, I have, you know, my line going down the, the line. How would you, oh, maybe you're breaking it up at your breaker, breaker panel at the, um, at your unit already. So maybe you have more than one set of wires coming in. Maybe that's what it is. And then maybe you can designate which circuit you have your AC on. And then from there, you could energize it, right? So, so that was right, um, um, Yankee, that you do have a desert, you have an extra designated line in your box that is tied directly to the AC unit and not to your whole house. Because I was about to say, you know, your how would you desert, um, you know, break up the circuit, right? So that's probably what you're doing. But what are you, what are you using for us are you, to um, actually trigger on the the relay or your what type of relay are you using? Yeah, you're using a solid state. Uh, that's what I was assuming. Uh, there's a solid state 50 amp relay that runs on AC. If the charge controller is in flow. I will make a video. Yeah, make a video on that. I'd love to see that. I could probably um, use utilize that in a some because I've seen the solid states for DC, right? Um, and I think I have seen the solid states for AC. Okay. And but what is the AC on? The, okay, okay. I'm, I, yeah, you're gonna have to make a video on that so that way I can um, see how you're um, how you got that side set up on the AC side. So there's so many options, right, guys? This is what this is why it's good to talk to the community so we can, you know, get ideas, um, you know, and figure out what works for everybody. And maybe you can implement something into your system. Um, my general thinking is, you know, just pull off the DC side of things, right, and go straight to DC, which would work. Um, but then, you know, if you're running in like like um, Yankee is an AC unit, um, that's most likely not going to be DC, right? That's going to be AC. And so he's using a solid state relay that's being triggered by his charge controller to um, engage a um, AC side load. That's what it seems like. I use a charge controller to send the signal to the solid state. Yes. Um, so, so when this guy hits float, the air conditioner, uh, uh, this load comes on. I'd like to see how you got that wired because I understand it's just a, it's sending a signal to the relay to turn on and off. Right. Oh, oh, hello. Sorry, Yankee. It's still early in the morning for me. <laughs> Brain fart. I completely understand what you're saying now. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you. I got you. Yeah, the, the relay is just a switch in between one of the lines. Yeah, yeah, I got you. And um, the, the diversion is the signal to trigger that switch. And then your power line that's running to your AC unit is running in between that relay, which is acting as a switch technically. Is that right?
Ah, got it right on. <laughs> Thanks, Yankee Sire. It's still early in the morning. I've been staying up late working on this system. Brain's not functioning exactly um, 100 yet. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's cool, man. That's really really cool. Good for you, man. I'm happy that's working out. In fact, um, if you could, here's another thing. I have played around with some of the solid state relays, and I'll, and two of them that, that I bought were junk. I mean, they just, I don't know what it was. Maybe it was just knockoffs because I, I have seen some information out there that some of the solid state relays were knockoffs and um, just junk. And I some of mine just got so hot that they couldn't handle it. And even though they were rated for a higher amperage, um, they just wouldn't handle And I actually experimented with that um, a while ago, back when I was living in the other place. Yes, the relay is a switch. Yep. Do you have a recommendation on the um, the relay you're using? I'd love to know which which relay and where you got it from because I'd like to try it out. That way I can play around with some more um, some more things because I do have, like I said, a split air AC unit being installed that can do AC and heat, right? And so that would be a very nice um, that would be very nice. Yeah, in the video, please state the brand or, um, you know, your specs on it and where you got it from. Because I would probably like to buy a couple of them. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> so, yeah, we have some options today, guys. We have some options. This is why I'm talking to the community here. This is awesome. So, we have a couple options here. We can take the extra power. Well, here's the first option is basically just cut the power, right? Once it hits float... We don't do anything with the power. It just stops, and that is it. Wind turbine is off. It just basically gets short, and that's it, which is, I guess, okay if you need to use it that way. Or we have another option. We can take that power. We can run it into the the um, heating tank, the, the hot water heating tank for the house, or we can divert that into the to the power to the, the actual spa or jacuzzi that I have over here. Um, or we could actually do what um, Yankee is doing and we could divert the power through an AC solid state relay to power a independent circuit, um, in his case, a AC unit. Let's see, I'll make a video and I will, where I got it from, there are no cheap, so you gotta buy a real good one, not cheap. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not worried about what's cheap, what's not cheap, that's not the issue. Um, I just want to make sure I get a good one that lasts and can handle. The last thing I want is a fire, right? And I don't know if you guys have noticed, I've actually put up um, high voltage, danger high voltage um, stickers everywhere. So just in case if I'm not around and somebody wonder, like, you know, my, one of my family members come back here that don't know what's going on or what if we have people staying over, they don't just wander in here for no reason, right? I do have a lock on the door and everything, but still, um, I put high voltage on there. I have another high voltage on that panel. Also, I have another high voltage on this panel. Um, so just kind of help, um, you know, uh, make people aware what's going on. Oh yeah. So yeah, you just have that solid state relay in energizing an independent circuit that's wired to a plug. And then that way you can plug in anything to that plug. And that would be from your diversion load or your, I mean, yeah, your dump load from your charge controller. Yeah, cool. I like that idea. I do like that idea. The only thing is, though, I think the um, the split air conditioners that I'm looking at are 240. I don't think do they. Well, I mean, I have 240 here, right? But do they do they make a solid state relay that can handle the 240? I'm sure they must. I mean, if they make one 120, they must make 240. Yeah, 20 amps is the max for the for your plug. Yeah. Yeah, they make them? Oh, okay, cool. Right on. Yeah, definitely Um, send me a link or make a video right away <laughs> because I'm the type of person I don't wait for nothing. I'll start ordering things already so they come in and we can start playing around with some more, some more things. That's another thing too. I do have my um, AC unit, the split air conditioner um, on its – well, not on its way yet. They haven't they haven't given me an um, updated shipping yet. Um, but I did order it, so I'm just waiting to, um, for it to arrive so I can hook it up. I really like that idea. We have so many options here, guys. That's cool. Very cool. Um, what else did I want to cover? Oh, so one more thing is um, my bridge rectifier for the wind turbine, right? Because we have to, the 
it's a wild three phase AC, right? So wild three phase AC comes down with three wires, which, you know, most of us know that already. Um, but you know, you run it through a bridge rectifier that way you can convert it over to DC and you can consume it. You know, you can use that power, right? It's going to be usable power at that point. Um, and, and most of you guys know your bridge rectifiers get hot. And so in the past, I've used a fan um, with a temperature sensor controller to turn on and off accordingly to the temperature, and it worked fine. But um, what I'm thinking about doing is actually getting a big aluminum plate. Well, maybe not big, big, but big enough aluminum plate or a big enough heat sink. That way I can mount my bridge rectifier to it um, to help dissipate that heat from that um, bridge rectifier. Um, the source where it runs a little bit cooler, a little bit more efficient. Uh, and then pump that power into the, um, you know, the charge controller there. Um, so I'm probably going to have to find a aluminum plate or find some, maybe look online for a heat sink that'll work for that. Uh, let's see. Smoky Mountain, what's up? Hey, thanks. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you. I uh, can I even charge things like flashlights and drills with the dump load plug. Yeah, that's cool. You have a designated circuit. So, um... Yeah, once you once you realize that you're in um, dump mode, uh, you know you already have free power anyway, and you can charge and do whatever you want with it. And how much how much watts is your AC unit running on um, total amount? If you don't mind me asking, Michael, what's up? Good energy efficient hot water heater. Okay. Oh uh, yeah. So Three hundred fifty ish. Oh, okay. Because my AC unit that I have coming in, I believe runs at like twelve hundred or fifteen hundred watts. I think it's twelve hundred. But once it comes in, we'll verify the specs on it. Um, I tried to get an energy efficient one because we are trying to save power, even though we have extra power, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, and I believe that is two forty. So. That's the only issue, right? Is the the weak the weak link in the link will be the solid state relay, right? Uh, first, it has to be able to handle the voltage and the amperage coming um, that the um, the load or the device is pulling. Um, that's another thing. Do you have a um, do you have a um, heat sink on your um, solid state relay? I'm assuming you must you must have because it gets hot. So that's fine, just get a big relay. <clears throat> yeah, you do have a heat sink. Yeah, those things get warm. <laughs> For sure. Uh, how many hours would those Tesla batteries be? Well, that's the thing, right? Um, when you're dealing with the lithium, they're a little... Well, it's... it's it, you know, I used to do amp hours all the time, right? Like, especially with the 12-volt system. But it's really now about kilowatts, right? And so... It, it, and it's easier to to figure things out because when you calculate your home as far as um, your power usage, you're calculating that in kilowatts anyway, right? And then your batteries, you know, have a certain amount of kilowatts. So it's a lot easier to, to um, you know, think about your situation when you're thinking about kilowatts. Um, and then whatever my total kilowatts is, I'm actually taking 10 off the top and 10 off the bottom because I'm not trying to push my batteries, you know, any higher than I need to um, keep them at, a, you know, more of a... Um, what 58 my, my sweet spot is going to be 58.8 really and try to just keep them there um but i won't go 10 percent up and i won't go 10 percent below the the minimum i mean before the minimum to kind of keep them healthy but yeah kilowatts is um a lot better easier way to figure things out i think um because amp hours is a little bit different because lead acid batteries right um once you get to almost 50 percent it's time to shut off your batteries already right so you don't technically get the total amount of amp hours out of that right so even if it, if a battery is say 100 amp hours and kicking off or damaging the battery right so um you don't even get a 100 amp hours out of it um if that was the case you know like the lead acid batteries unless you had a bunch of them then you know you can make it work that way, but you you have to compensate for that that part of the battery where you you're not supposed to touch, right? 
So, like I said, um, my total bank um, is going to only be charged up to, uh, on the few days, I might bump it up to 60 volts. But other than that, it's going to be 58.8 volts total. Okay, hold on. We have some, um, let's see. Yeah, you can cook an egg after it. <laughs> yeah. I know those solid states really is get hot, man. I mean, wow. It's like too hot sometimes. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Gonna have to get a really big heat sink and a fan on that thing. Um, if it really starts producing a lot of heat, especially when I start drawing, you know, over a thousand watts of power easy. Oh, let's see here. 110 volt energy efficient heating and cooling system. Um, yeah. But, um, I, I don't know the, I mean, that's a whole nother conversation, right? <laughs> um, 240 compared to 210. I mean, you can do a quick Google search on that. It'll tell you the, the benefits of having something a little bit higher voltage. Uh, U.S. power meter, raspberry, Z-Wave, a little script. To check if flow, and then you can power any device according to conditions. Dennis. Hmm, that's a lot of information right there. Um, for me, honestly, I don't know nothing about Raspberry. I, I know oh. what it does, but I, I don't know nothing about them, really. Um, I have to look into those things. I'm trying to keep it simple, you know? Try to keep it simple. I just want to run my stuff efficiently. I don't want nothing to catch on fire. <laughs> that's the last problem I want. Um, so... Anyway, guys, my battery is at 15%. It's pretty gonna, pretty much going to die here soon. Uh, I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit um, because Old Time Engineer brought up a very good question or statement uh, about what am I going to do with all the extra power once my, you know, once my batteries are in float from the wind turbine. And, you know, if you guys are unaware, I have tons of wind out here. So, I, you know, that's, the issue is not having enough wind. The, the issue is having too much power now, right? And so... Um, I want to talk to you guys about, try to focus here. I want to talk to you guys about um, some options. And I got some really good options, so I really appreciate that, guys. Um, we have some options now. Now I just got to weigh out what I want to do with it now and how I'm going to accomplish that, right? <laughs> uh, if you put your mind to it, folks, you can get anything done, believe me. Yeah, your dedication will get you through, believe me. So, <laughs> let's see. How many wind turbines do you have? So, um, if you're new to the channel, I used to have a 12 volt system, a small 12 volt system, and I had three wind turbines on that, um, with solar panels. Now that we built the new, um, you know, 60 volt system here with the Tesla batteries, um, I just two days ago, actually, this is the third day right now, um, that I went ahead and, um, installed a brand new, um, Thermodyne wind turbine, um, which has been basically just, I mean, pumping power out like there's no tomorrow and so everything has been keeping everything charged and so the issue we're at right now is basically i have too much power and i need to figure out what i'm going to do with all this extra power besides just stopping the power from coming in right um will i add more wind turbines down the road um it's, it's a high possibility high possibility let me tell you that um i probably will add at least another wind turbine um, to the system here for the new system at least as far as all the wind turbines is concerned from the 12 volt side um, They're basically decommissioned right now um, Yeah, they're basically just decommissioned at the moment because I have the big system now and everything's working better than expected so um, I may just take down the other um, 12 volt wind turbines and just kind of retire them for now uh, I'm not saying I won't ever use them again, but what I'm saying is um, for now, I need to finish up my bigger project. And then um, once the house is completely done being built, um, I can worry about a small, a smaller system again for, you know, whatever needs, really. Tom, oh, sorry, guys. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, the yeah, it, there's, the, in the owner's manual, it helps to, uh, if people are unfamiliar um, as far as how to energize your um, your relays and stuff, 
Um, you go into your diversion and then you can pick, you know, um, there's lots of options on how you can pick it. You can even see right here, like relay out, right? Auxiliary um, two, auxiliary one, um, in and out. Um, that would be basically where you'd be tying into your, um, that's just basically sending, sending a signal to your solid state relay to, um, you know, say turn on or turn off at the moment. So it doesn't have to be very thick wires. It's just sending a signal saying, okay, on, okay, off, you know. Let's see. Can't wait to do it, do this myself. Hey, well, good for you, man. Ray, aloha from Oregon. What's up, man? What's up? Anyway, guys, my battery is now at 13%. It's about to die. If it didn't die already. Are you guys still there? My screen is frozen. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Yankee. Definitely make a video. I'd love to watch that. Um, I want to see the brand and where you bought them from because I'll buy a couple for um, experimenting and a couple for um, backups for sure. Yeah, I know how you're doing it now. I just need to make sure I get the right relay. <laughs> That's the main thing. So, anyway, guys, looks like my screen is frozen up on me here. My battery's on 12% and dropping. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I got to sign out here. I hope you guys can hear me. Um, but my screen is frozen, and it's time to log out. 12%. She's dropping quick, guys. Time to go. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you guys later.